Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in this great big world. Welcome to my channel, Divine Truth Tarot. We are going to do a check-in here. Um, what I'd like to do for today is a little different. I would like this to be a reading for the Divine Feminines to empower you. I made a mistake in yesterday's reading when I was talking about the new moon in Pisces. We just had a new moon in Leo. It is the full moon in Pisces. So even more exciting because things are coming to a culmination. Uh, if you haven't listened to my readings over the past few days, I highly recommend you listen to them. I have been getting channeled information as well as just downloads, light code integration, and really empowered thinking that I'm able to share with you guys and you know as I go further into my detachment from the physical version of my divine masculine I find so much empowerment and I find that I'm healing codependency that has been present in my life for as long as I can remember with all relationships particularly with romantic relationships with men and I've also discovered that it's not that I'm lonely, it's that I'm getting used to my aloneness. And I've had these sort of tower moments, little mini tower moments, if you will, where I have been not only healing past lifetime, uh, past lifetimes um, with my counterpart and with others, as many of you have at this time, um, this very, very potent time um, in our ascension process. But also, I have been coming to terms with the fact that if I am meant to go this alone, then I will empower myself and I will do this alone. And I know that sounds a little controversial, but hear me out. I feel like we have to get to a point in our journey where we're completely comfortable and confident being on our own um, financially and uh, really in all aspects, you know, emotionally and being able to really rely on the friends and family that we have, our pets, um, being really present in our lives and feeling like we have full a full life that we're living without our counterpart so that when you come together, which is inevitable, okay, but it's almost like you have to convince yourself that you're not going to. Um, that is part of the healing process. At least it has been for myself and many divine feminines that are friends of mine that are in my soul tribe and soul family, including some of my clients. So it's like we've had to really come to this place of being okay with if we never hear from our counterpart again. A lot of this ha goes back to past lifetimes where you lost your counterpart you were separated in some way, they chose somebody else and you've gone through this pain. So it's almost like you're temporarily reliving it so that you can overcome it and you know that you'll be okay. You know that you're going to be able to stand on your own two feet. I think that's integral. I think that's so vital and so important for the process of healing so that when you do come together, you're not two halves, but two holes. So two holes of the same soul, not two halves split apart because that's where the pain comes in. When we dwell on the pain, we receive more pain. We, we, whatever we think is what we bring into our reality. So we are responsible for the relationships that we have. We're responsible not for what our divine masculine is doing in the 3D per se, but we are responsible for how we respond to what they're doing in the 3D. So simply stated and frankly, if your divine masculine is not being able to provide for you at this time what you know you deserve, then cut the ties and cut the cords from that version of your connection, yourself and your masculine so that you can heal and invite in a different version. If you stay in that vibration of accepting crumbs, whatever those crumbs are, okay, accepting less than, um, let me state a few examples. Let's say your masculine has an addiction and you just accept, 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 and you're, you're the person he knows or he or she knows they can go to when things get really hard. What if you stopped being that person and they had to figure it out and heal on their own, which is exactly what's supposed to happen. We can't be the crutch for the divine masculine and vice versa. They can't be the crutch for us. 
Um, another example might be a karmic partner. If you entertain that karmic partner, what incentive does your divine masculine have just as a human to make any changes? Now, now hear me out because I'm not, this is not judgmental. I'm just giving you a different perspective from my perspective. Take what resonates, leave what doesn't. If it doesn't work for you or if it triggers you, look deeper into that. Why are my words triggering you? If it doesn't resonate and you know your truth, no worries at all. Don't listen to what I'm saying right now. But what I know to be true in my situation and for many of my Divine Feminine friends who are on the same level and on the same leg of their journey as myself um, with different situations um, uh, is that we have to honor ourselves first and foremost. We are our own before we're anybody else's. So if your Divine Masculine isn't showing up, it's an addiction or a karmic partner or a karmic family member or... Um, a workaholic, which is another form of addiction. You know, karma, karmics, karmics are really addictions in some way. You know, codependency to the partner, whatever it might be. If they're just not showing up and they're not committing to you in the way that you want, cut the cord and don't be afraid because on the other side of that is a different version, an improved version for your connection, your masculine and yourself where you are demanding, and that sounds bad, but that's the only word I can think of. And it's not like, this is not like Queen of Swords demanding. This is just, you are expecting and only accepting, let's put it that way, the best. And if you're not receiving it, you're simply not entertaining it. And that forces your masculine to level up because the truth is they can't live without you. So if you want something to change, you must change your behavior because likely your masculine will keep on feeding you crumbs if that's what you're accepting because we accept the love we think we deserve. So when you level up, they will be forced to level up, even if it includes a period of separation while both of you mature. Okay, so I'm going to get off my soapbox and get to the cards. What you guys know that I'm working on your readings for this week. I'm booked up for next week and I'm starting to book up for the week after. And then I'll probably take a little break on readings. I'm not sure. I really enjoy doing them, so probably not. Um, at some point, I'll be taking a break, but that'll probably be in October around my birthday. So I'll let you guys know. And if you would like a reading, reach out to me. My email is listed below. And if you're not sure what I offer, you can look through the community tab. I offer Twin Flame readings, North Node readings, and I offer Divine Masculine Channeled Love Letter readings. Okay, so let's get going, guys. Sending you guys all love and light and strength. Also, I wanted to state while I'm shuffling these cards that a lot of you are currently transmuting for your masculine and it's going to feel pretty intense. There's some anger coming up, frustration. There might be sadness mixed in there, um, resentment. A lot of you, some of the physical sensations are dizziness or dizzy spells, nausea. Um, like for instance, this might sound gross, but I've never had a gag reflex and all of a sudden certain foods are making me gag and... <sighs> I have TMJ, which sucks. And when I go to my chiropractor and he does an adjustment about once a week, um, what's been happening lately is it's like, I feel like I'm going to gag. And this, I've never had this problem going to a dentist or having any work done. So, oh, divine feminine. Yes. <laughs> yes. So what I'm feeling is um, that there are changes going on. It's almost as if um, our bodies are definitely changing to accept in the light codes. Some of you will feel like you need junk food. It's the density of the food. So what I would suggest, I'm not, look, go with what you know your body needs or wants in that moment, even if it's not the healthiest, but I'm, I'm a health advocate. So what I'm going to say is go for something dense, like dense leafy greens that are really going to nurture your body and give it lots of oxygen and chlorophyll. But if you think you need some fries, go and have those damn fries. Okay, go and do the things that you think your body needs at this time. Sleep as much as you possibly can. Uh, take salt baths at this time. And understand that even if you're not in communication with your masculine, absolutely, you're transmuting for them at this time. Not everyone will be feeling this way, but I'm thinking the majority, about 70% of us are going to be feeling this way. And it's going to be a little frustrating because we feel like it's sort of this, if we're not in communication with you, why are we transmuting for you? Um, but the divine masculine needs our help. So some of you will be feeling this in the 5D, the 5D pull. Others will be dreaming and others will actually receive 3D communication, but not maybe 30%, not very many. Excuse me at this time. 
So let's get into the cards. So Divine Feminine, we have the sun coming up for you. Remember, this is your reading. So we're not going to be looking into your counterpart's energies. So everything is coming up roses for the Divine Feminine. As she stands, he or she stands in their power, you see that love and beauty and hope and faith and abundance surround you. And there is this energy of everything working out for the best. And to me, the sun is not only one of the most positive energetic cards in the deck, but it's, it, yeah, it's definitely the vibration. It's definitely energy, but it's also, it's hope. It's hope for what is, it's hope for what will come. And it shows that we're going to be getting past these transmutations, these mini tower moments that we're having and any sort of any sort of discomfort that's been coming up is going to be removed and released. And the density is going, you're going to start to feel lighter again. This card always has a really light feel to me. So that is around the corner for the Divine Feminines. I also feel like as you release your masculine, you will start to feel this naturally. Now, they, they will start to tug on you, especially when they feel like they're losing you. But there will be moments where you feel complete freedom. And, you know, you sort of realize with this, this card that everything, this is the yes card in the deck. You know, everything is coming up. Like I said, I just keep on hearing everything is coming up roses and the sun is shining down on you. And there's really nothing more wonderful than the sun card in a reading. There's no negative aspects to this card. And everything is just falling into place beautifully. And it really speaks to the power of the present moment and appreciating what you have right now in this moment without kind of looking ahead or looking forward to what's coming next. This is about really appreciating those people and experiences that you're having right now, even if your counterpart is a miss or even if your counterpart is MIA and celebrating and dancing just because. And celebrating you, celebrating your life, celebrating the fact that you're alive, okay? This has come up uh, over the past few days in the collective readings, so there's definitely the energy afoot of we're turning the page and September is set to be a very remarkable month in terms of the changing of the energy, the changing of the tides. And as I mentioned, it does have to do at least partially with not only that Pisces full moon, but also the north nodes changing into Gemini, south node changing into um, yeah, Sagittarius for the collective. So a lot of very chatty energy, a lot of um, busting out the seams energy because Gemini is the talker of the zodiac and also, as I mentioned, representing the twins, okay? So beautiful energy, divine feminines. Congratulations, if you've been able to, to get this far and to really feel comfortable in your own skin and to really welcome in beautiful things, congratulations on transmuting for yourself, the collective, your divine masculine. Congratulations for getting to this point. Congratulations for the abundance that's incoming indefinitely. I mean, it's coming in. It's just pouring in over the next few months. The next few months, it's not that we're out of it's not that we're completely out of the dark. It's that we are really starting to step towards the light more and more as a collective. More and more people are waking up every single day realizing we've been living in a matrix. We've been living in an illusory world where the darkness has threatened to really take over and has succeeded for quite a long time in reigning. And now the light is taking over and and I'm getting chills. And, and as more people wake up, we realize the power we have that we're stronger together, okay? So there's a lot to be celebrating, especially in 2021, 2022, 2023, Divine Feminines. I just feel so much goodness coming in. Karmic situations finally ending. It may take most of this year, and that's okay because you wouldn't want your counterpart to come in halfway again. I know that I've made it very clear to my guides and my masculine's higher self uh, if there is going to be hot and cold in and out and indecisions, I'm not interested in that. And that was not an easy decision to make. It took me about eight months to get to that point. I was indecisive myself because I wanted to be with him. And yet what I was receiving wasn't what I deserved. And he knew that. And, you know, 
sometimes the universe just wants you to stand up for yourself so that it can deliver what you deserve. And for me, that was definitely the case of standing up for myself. This is not what I deserve. This is what I deserve. And this is the only thing that I'll accept, not just from him, but from anyone. And being very adamant and clear, this is what I expect. This is what I will tolerate. This is what I will accept. And so honor that. Talk to your guides. Talk to your divine masculines, higher self, and make it very clear what you will and won't tolerate. A focus on what you deserve. You do not have to be mean about it, although I've been guilty of, you know, cursing him out in the shower when I've been angry and purging and, and going through my own dark night. And I think that's just natural, normal part of the journey and nothing to be ashamed about. It hasn't always been sunshines and roses for me being in separation. But I do know that that was the only way that he was going to grow to become the divine masculine. And so... They're really not the divine masculine until they step into that role. Otherwise, it's just a distorted masculine energy. So the divine masculine energy arises within your counterpart sometimes through separation, through you putting your foot down. So even if it creates separation, please understand that there's a rhyme and a reason for it and that that separation is going to lead eventually to what it is you truly desire. If you keep spinning your wheels on the karmic cycle, you're just going to get stuck. And that's what was happening as we were creating. And he even recognized there's a pattern, there's a cycle. Why can't we break out of the cycle? It's because I was accepting less than what I knew I deserved as a human, as a woman, as a divine feminine, as a queen. And once you realize that and you put it out there and you verbalize it, it's so potent. It's so powerful. The divine masculine has no choice but to go deep inside, go through a dark night of the soul, feel like they're losing you, feel like they're losing control and footing of everything in their life so that they can come back to a changed man or woman. And that's what's happening right now. We have the page of wands, divine feminine. I love Sorry, that's annoying. I love this card because this is the card of new beginnings. Page of Wands. There's such an anticipatory energy. So much anticipation, excitement, curiosity. And look, you can see he's he's well-dressed. He's excited. Colorful energies. Lots of solar plexus and sacral chakra energies. A little bit of that root chakra, but mostly solar plexus for self-worth. He knows he can do this on his own. And then the orange for you know, even the kitty cats, orange and white, my favorite, the orange kitties. No offense, Charlie. I love you very much. <laughs> um, you guys by now know about my socks kitty. He's the love of my life and um, passed away in 2013. Uh, he was an orange and white kitty and just, I got him in college and he was my best friend and a very, very special animal, a very, very special part of my family. I love him dearly. And so... We see the orange cat and we see the orange shirt and that's sacral chakra, sensuality, sacred sensuality and sexuality and the sharing and the merging of the chakras and the opening of the kundalini, the rising of the kundalini, but also creativity. So divine feminine, I mean, the sun is shining on creative projects right now for you and your lives. And this is coming up so much in the private readings that I'm doing for particularly North Node readings where it's fully and solely a reading for you. And I look into your energies and I look into your karmic past. We look into astrology. We look into, it's an intuitive read. I pull cards. There's a lot going on in that reading. It's very comprehensive and it's your soul gifts you're bringing into this lifetime, your soul's direction, your soul's purpose and guidance for how to live that purpose. So I really, really love this card. Wands is fast moving. You know, this is a passionate young lad. And you know, while you see there's a bit of trepidation he is also really excited to step out on this new path. I mean, he's got new clothes. They're clean. He's got his wand. He's got his broomstick full of goodies and food. He's got his animals. You know, there's a lizard there. Lizards, to me, indicate, indicate a deep knowing and a very, um, it's sort of like the, the part of you that is reptilian, the part of you that is connected to that inner knowing and very much kind of like the caveman and cavewoman mentality. It's like just, you know what you need to do and you're being led by this higher self. You're being led by a force greater than you. And the kitty cat is representative of 
realizing that you're never alone, that you, you are your own best friend, but also befriending animals and befriending nature right now is going to be really important as fall rolls around, rolls around, roar, fall rolls around the corner here in the Northern Hemisphere. So there's about to be a new journey, Divine Feminine. It's completely new and different. It's going to be something unlike anything you've ever experienced before. And again, there's a little bit of fear. There's a little bit of trepidation, but nothing will stop you from traveling on this path. So many of you are moving in new directions. It could be an actual physical move. It could be you're moving departments at your job. It could be you're starting out as an entrepreneur. It could be new friendships, new love interests. You know, it's, it's not a sin to have a relationship, you know, when your counterpart isn't physically there. Now there's controversy, there's controversy over this, but it's your life, it's your journey. You get to decide if, if you want to entertain a high level soulmate and there's a teacher, then by all means do it, Divine Feminine. Don't hold yourself back waiting on your Divine Masculine. You're supposed to be living your life and that includes making physical moves, making um, you know, healing and, and having friendships and, and letting people into your life and learning and this is what the journey is all about. It's not about it's not about sacrifice in the sense that you're not supposed to be with anyone else, especially if your masculine is with a karmic partner. You know, you there I could go I could go on and on about this, but there are readers or teachers who say, "Well, you'll delay your union." I don't believe that. I believe that actually this is going to add to your learning and to your journey, and if it makes you a better person, there's no way that's delaying your journey. Um, your divine masculine will arrive when he or she is ready to. And in the meantime, enjoy your life, have fun, dance, love, kiss, do the things that make you happy, you know, creatively paint, start the project, um, travel, just do the things that you love, divine feminine. So this is a very youthful energy as well because it is a page. So very youthful energy, sort of like the inner child healing that the feminines are doing, you know, inner child healing the inner child so that you can really turn the corner and really do it in a way that's going to be more, more curiosity and less fear. So I really love these energies, Divine Feminine. Let's see what is coming up in September for the Divine Feminines. What else is coming up? <laughs> the same cards keep on coming up no matter no matter what. Queen of Pentacles. Although we had Queen of Swords yesterday for Divine Feminine. Queen of Pentacles. Yeah, I mean, this is a woman who has it all. I mean, these, these three cards tell a story in and of themselves. Okay, this is about your happily ever after and creating it for yourself, Divine Feminine. Not waiting on anyone else to come complete you or make you happy or make you feel safe you're creating this for yourself you're creating your own wealth w-e-l-l-t-h not just w-e-a-l-t-h this is your own inner health inner well-being this is a woman who i mean she's abundant look there's an abundance of cats which what more could you ask for i mean seriously <laughs> What more could you ask for? She has on beautiful attire. She's got, you know, look at all the fruit that she has. Look at all the treasure, the pentacles she has there, you know, just waiting at her feet. Um, she's in love with life and love is in love with her. And life is in love with her. We have the hermit. So there may be a little bit of energy here of in September uh, for some of you, I'm feeling, where there may not be action, but there may be a lot of contemplation and meditation and just a going within to really stir up the inner knowing, okay, that's deep inside your soul. So if you're feeling a little bit of that hermit energy, don't, don't be afraid. Just understand that this is all for your highest good. And you're going to come out of that. I mean, honestly, Libra season can sometimes be a little sleepy for some of us. Um, but what I'll say about that is... There's a lot of equality and, and justice being served in Libra season. So we have Virgo season. We're in Virgo season now. Then we step into Libra and then Scorpio. So once October, the end of October to November rolls around, we're going to be completely out of hermit, the hermit energy. You cannot be in Scorpio season and be in a hermit energy. Uh, you will be taking action and you will be stirring up 
hopefully a little bit of drama. I mean, it is Scorpio season, let's be real. <laughs> let's be real, guys. I'm a Scorpio sun and Scorpio Venus. I can talk shit about Scorpios. There's going to be a little drama in Scorpio season, but I feel like it's going to be exciting drama. Like, I feel like this could be, you know, people, you coming back into contact with your masculine and there being maybe a little bit of, basically you kind of demanding the apology and being like, oh, it's fine. You want to come back in? Where's my apology? This is what I want. A, B, C, D. <laughs> but don't worry that divine masculine is going to rise up and meet the challenge. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> okay, so this is also the energy with the Hermit card, guys, uh, for Divine Feminines, of accepting that aloneness doesn't mean that you're lonely, and that's something I already brought up in this reading, so more validation just coming through with the cards, but just because, you know, you're feeling like you're alone, or you're having to do things alone, or you see others in partnerships and marriages, and you're, you know, you're going, where is my happily ever after. Well, you're creating it for yourself as we've already stated here. And this is true, true wholeness. This is establishing wholeness within yourself without the need for someone else to come and fill you up. Most marriages and relationships nowadays are based on codependency. They're based on really, really toxic patterns of relating to one another and expecting the other person to fill you up. So many of us have had those karmic relationships in the past where we're now purging and have purged and rounded the corner on codependency. So the masculines will follow suit, not to worry. They'll have no choice but to do so because remember, they're your counterpart. So they're, when you rise up and level up in energy, they have no choice but to do the same. Sorry, divine masculine, whether you like it, you know, or are ready to or want to or not, it's what's gonna be asked of you because your feminine is, she's on this journey and feminines aren't looking back anymore. I feel like there was a lot of looking back earlier this year because it was just a scary time for all of us. A very, there was a lot of unknowns in this year in 2020. And so a lot of divine feminines initially were looking back and saying, where's the masculine? Well, the feminine isn't doing that anymore. So it, it forces the masculine to look ahead and say, wait a minute, I've lost sight of my feminine. Where's my feminine? <clears throat> Seven of Pentacles has been coming up a lot as well. This is about knowing that you have planted the seeds and you are, there's an expectation, okay, of things to grow. There's an expectation of things coming to fruition. Maybe not being able to see it yet. So having, learning to be comfortable, really going along with this hermit energy, learning to be comfortable waiting for things and not, of course, actually waiting. You guys know what I mean when I say waiting. This is not, it's a staying busy, living your life, but also knowing that something is blossoming even if you can't yet see it, okay? So that's important because on this journey can be, you know, kind of a mind fuck where you can't see what's happening. So there's sort of this like, okay, well, it's happening, but I mean, where is it? You know, it can't see it. I'm supposed to trust the 5D and the 4D and that's all fine and dandy. But at some point we want something in the physical. We want to be able to taste and touch our counterpart, our masculine. We want that reunion. We want that union. Nobody wants to just live in the 5D and not have a partner in the 3D. It's not what we want. That's not what this journey is about. Yeah, divine feminines expect tower moments, but... What I'm hearing for this is that these tower moments are going to be minor and they're actually going to lead to something really, really freaking amazing. So this is not a tower moment to be dreaded, like some of those other devastating tower moments, you know, where you lost, lost communication with your counterpart and things just kind of went awry. This is not that kind of a tower moment. Rather, this is a tower moment that's going to open doors and that's going to eradicate any doubt and fears. And I feel like this is coming in mid-September. So I expect us to really have a collective tower moment together. So not to worry. Oh, I didn't pull it, but the hanged man just, I just saw the hanged man when I was shuffling. And what spirit said to me was the hanged man is coming up. Okay. In regards to the tower, because the masculines are going to be forced to take action. They're going to be forced. That's going to be their tower moment. I mean, divine feminine, what more can I say? You're the queen of pentacles. You're the queen of cups. Okay, so this is your emotionally stable, emotionally intelligent, emotionally available queen 
who's very nurturing and kind and giving. And this is a Queen of Pentacles ensuring that you also have healthy boundaries and that you're not codependent. So there's a beautiful balance here of these two energies, these two Queen energies, where it's not like you're not just the Queen of Cups because sometimes the Queen of Cups can overgive, overgive to others, deplete herself. And the Queen of Pentacles will ensure that you keep your own cup filled first. So I like these cards. I like these energies together. Ten of Pentacles has been coming up in the collective readings as well. Look, guys, we have the Sun, the Ten of Pentacles, the Page of Wands. I mean, these are such, such positive cards. And that's why I'm offsetting the Tower energy because I don't think the Tower energy, I'm not at all feeling like this is a Tower moment to end all Tower moments. This is not the energy that we've had in the past. This is very much the energy of washing away the past and stepping away and realizing that there were faulty foundations, even in our connections with our, our counterparts, with our masculines. And being okay with stepping away from what wasn't working so that we can create what was. Because we are creators of our own realities, like it or not. So Ten of Pentacles, the happy, healthy home, um, the kids, the family, the pets, uh, the money, the abundance, the joy, the companionship, the friendship, the laughter, the love. You've got it all. Everything. Everything. You Healthy children and vibrant, a vibrant see, you know, a happiness, a joy that infuses every part of your life. Divine Feminines, this is coming for you. And it's kind of the energy where we're having to believe it to see it. So create a vision board for yourself. And I think you can even do those electronically, but I think it's a lot more powerful if you actually create it. And if you have it somewhere where you can see it. So maybe if you can create it online and then print it out, maybe that would be powerful. But I still say what's more powerful is you just old school, you know, doing it old school. Okay. Ooh. Yeah, choices and decisions being made. Um, let's go back to the tower moment, okay? Because what we have here is the Three of Swords. I'm no longer scared of the Three of Swords. I used to be. But I see the tower moment crashing down any third-party situations and those coming to an end. There is going to be a moment where the Divine Feminine realizes her worth if you haven't already in such a way that walking away from a third party situation will feel like second nature and you won't even look back. And many of you have expressed that in the comments. Many of you have expressed that privately in emails to me or in any of clients that I've worked with who have been in these situations. Um, maybe it's you, Divine Feminine, who have this third party situation, but that's coming to an end and you want to do that as gracefully as possible, a graceful exit, as nurturing as possible, but also you know what you want. You want your Ten of Pentacles, so stand your ground. Don't take any shit and make sure you get what's what's yours, what's rightfully yours, okay? So I'm being told to say that because there are divine feminines. I don't talk about that as much because I generally channel for the collective whose divine masculines are in some sort of a third-party situation or it doesn't have to be, you know, as I've said, a relationship romantically, but a friendship, family, etc. addiction. But there are feminines who are going through this. So if you're going to be making a choice and it's going to bring ta a tower moment in. And that's going to be what creates the moment that changes everything. The sun. Okay. You can't have, it's almost like the divine is saying, how do you expect to get to the sun if you don't step away and heal from the past. If you if you stop you have to stop living in the past and things that don't work. Stop holding on to things that don't work and step into your brilliant future. Step into the part of you that knows that you deserve this. 3 of cups, friendship and celebration. I mean, guys, what a beautiful reading. What an incredibly powerful and beautiful reading. The only somewhat Two negative cards would be the Three of Swords and the Tower, but because those are coming up somewhat together, the way I'm reading them and the way my guides are having me interpret them is that 
the three of swords is coming to an end it's being burnt down that house okay the house that housed that third party situation is coming down it, it's this is like the leaning tower of pisa i mean it's it's not stable and it's not long lasting i don't care guys we had a divine feminine and i'm not going to name her name um, out of respect for her privacy, but she she made a comment. I pinned the comment on one of the I think it was on one of the community posts that I put on, not on one of the videos. And she said, "My divine masculine had been married for forty years, and he's getting divorced. The wife found out about her, and he's getting divorced. So it doesn't matter how long your divine masculine's been married, how many kids are involved, finances, things can shatter in an instant." Okay, things can be severed in an instant. Now, of course, that's on the material world. Emotionally, that's going to be, there's going to be emotions of distraught. There's going to be sadness. There's going to be pain, of course, because you've shared your life with somebody. But there's also the excitement, the page of wands energy, that this is a new beginning, a fresh start. And then I can finally have what I really wanted. Divine masculines and some divine feminines have been fooling themselves thinking that they're happy with the karmic. You cannot be happy with the karmic when you've met your twin flame and you know who that person is and you know what that feeling evokes inside of you on a soul level. This is a soul call and a soul pull magnetically towards this individual. So on the other side of this tower, we have a celebration that's coming in with this Pisces full moon that's happening on August 31st, or is it August 31st, September 1st is the full moon, I believe, or September 1st is September 2nd. There is going to be a celebration to be had, uh, divine feminines relishing in their progress, relishing in what, you know, their successes. And you see this, I mean, we have a lot of divine feminine energy coming in here. So a lot of celebrations to be had, and that full moon is going to be extra potent. So let's step over here and get some angel guidance to end the reading. Spirit, can you give us some advice from heaven for the divine feminines as we head into the month of September? No need to worry. There's no need to worry. Everything is working out. Everything is coming up. Roses, I mean, the cards say, state this. The cards reflect this. So this is just further validation that there's nothing to worry about, Divine Feminine, that everything is working out exactly the way it's supposed to. Trust, 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 and believe. Also believe in the signs. And I know I'm really guilty of, I can see, you know, a million signs in a day and I can write them off. Eh, it's just a coincidence. But it's not. It's not a coincidence. Those are signs from heaven, signs and synchronicities. Meditation brings answers. Yeah, harmony energy, right? Meditation is going to bring answers, divine feminine. I know that's frustrating because uh, oftentimes we want the answers right now. We want someone else to give it to us, but we are being asked to go deep within to find those answers. So let's get um. You guys know that I'm not big on time for the reasons I've stated over and over again, but let's take a look see if we can't get a little bit of clarity because I'm feeling like things are going to start to really happen here. Yeah, within the next few months. Not surprised. That's exactly what I expected to see. There's no need to worry. Meditation brings answers and you're going to have answers within the next few months. So I'm going to stop there, my beautiful Divine Feminines. Thank you so much for tuning in and watching. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe. The sharing really helps the channel grow. So please share on your own social media if you're comfortable doing that or in anywhere, you know, just sharing in an email or text. That really is what helps the channel grow. Um, I don't do any sort of advertising at all for this. It's all strictly through YouTube. That's how I grew my, my last channel and it, it, you know, just organically. So thank you guys for supporting each other, supporting the journey, supporting your masculine, supporting yourself, supporting um, my journey and supporting just being a divine feminine. Thank you so much for being you. Stay strong, stay courageous, stay in your power, and I'll see you soon. Much love.